My name is Margarita Marinova and I'm a research scientist at NASA Ames Research Center. I'm mostly interested in planets. Uh, a lot of it is Mars, but I also study Earth a lot and many of the other planets in the solar system. I think the biggest key to success is being passionate about something and allowing yourself to be passionate about something. Uh, I certainly know a lot of people who in high school when I told them that I wanted to be an astronaut and I wanted to study Mars, sort of laugh at it and be like, haha, right, of course you want to go to space. NASA Ames Research Center is one of the research centers located in California. and It does a lot of things. Uh, a lot of its beginnings were in aeronautics and it has a lot of wind tunnels, but it now also has a really large planetary sciences group and that's the group that I'm currently involved with. And this whole thing is our walk-in freezer, which is kept at uh, zero Fahrenheit, so about minus 10, minus 15 Celsius. It's really cold in there. Um, and what we do is we have our samples frozen so we can do a biology analysis on them, but we can also test some of our field techniques. I really love asking the question why, and I think that's one of my favorite things about my job. And not just asking it, but having the time and resources to go and answer that question why uh, is really exciting for me. So with this one it went in pretty easy, but it's surprising that actually the ice it doesn't work as well. So that's something we might have to uh, test further and make sure that it's ready for when we go into the field next year. Some work that I've done is actually looking at large impacts onto Mars. So what happens if you take something like the moon and throw it at Mars? Uh, does the whole planet melt? Uh, does it spew out a lot of material? But I also do a lot of work on extreme environments. For example, one of the projects that I'm heavily involved with now is going to Antarctica and studying uh, the extreme conditions that we find there. Mars is a cold and dry place, and Antarctica and the upper dry valleys, where, which is where we are, is the coldest, driest location that we know of on Earth. And Antarctica gives us a location where we can go and really do all of that very careful analysis. And we can go to Mars, take just a few measurements, and understand what's happening. Here we have the middle of the day, the middle of the night, and it goes back and forth. The temperature at the surface changes, but it also affects what's happening into the subsurface. This is one of my favorite problems because a lot of things are coming together to do this. We've left instruments out in the field for years at a time so that we can really look at what the different environmental parameters are. How does the light vary? How does the temperature vary? So right now, having the science and math background that I have is certainly important. But I think on the personality side, what's really important is being curious about what you see, always asking questions and never stopping. And also the self-motivational aspect. That's one aspect that's different from a lot of other professions where you have a lot of deadlines, you know exactly what you need to get done today. Exploring Mars, and especially the human exploration of Mars, requires everything. It requires the scientists, it requires the engineers, the people who come up with policy, the people who come up with the money. Everything that we have learned as humans over the last number of thousands of years has to come together for us to really be able to do human exploration on Mars. And I think that's really what captured my imagination, that it was everything coming together to go and explore this planet.